Hey, welcome back. Really excited to get going on part four of our five part series on network scanners. So in the first lesson, we created Ping Sweeper. In the second, we built on that to add port scanning and multi-threading functionality. In the previous lesson, we started a script that will grab the service banners of a socket. And now we'll add to that script by also giving it OS fingerprinting functionality, as well as the ability to save results to a CSV file. Much like how service fingerprinting could potentially give us information about our target, which we can use, so to OS fingerprinting might give us critical information about the operating system of our target. We might, for example, discover they are running an outdated version of an operating system that is vulnerable, which of course is quite useful if our ultimate goal is to exploit it. And as I'm sure you know by now, for anything related to security, creating logs or reports is essential. Logging, logging. So nearly every Python cyber script you'll be creating in the future will have to include some ability to output results to a file. Okay, great. So just one final thing before we get coding. Right at the top of the description, you can find a link to the actual script. And as always, I recommend downloading it so you can focus on the lesson and not on transcription. Enough with the chit chat, let's get to it. So here's the entire script. Let's quickly get a lay of the land. Right up top, we import all the necessary modules. We then define our functions. The primary function scan host will do the service and OS fingerprinting for each socket. The second function will create a CSV file and then correctly format and save our results to it. And then as is the custom, we have our main function which will handle input, the calling of other functions and general housekeeping such as communicating the results to the terminal. Okay, so now that we've looked at the big picture, let's jump in and analyze each line individually. First, we'll import all the required libraries. Our parse is used to parse command line arguments. And then here we can see a library called nmap. And that's strange because as most of you probably know, nmap is the name of the de facto scanner used by the security industry. And so just so you know, that's another awesome benefit of working in Python. We have access to the nmap library, which basically gives our script the ability to call on and use any function from nmap. So as you can probably guess, this is super powerful. So please go ahead and explore it more on your own. Next, we import the CSV library which unsurprisingly allows us to work with CSV files. Then the OS library is used to interact with the operating system. And finally, we have the sys library, which is going to again allow us input from the command line. Okay, so we immediately define our scan host function, which would do all the heavy lifting. You might recall that in our previous script, we used Python's built-in socket library to send and receive packets in order to perform our service fingerprint. This time, however, we'll use the nmap library to handle both our service and OS fingerprinting. So we immediately create a nmap.portscanner object which allows us to scan the IP and ports we provided to the function as arguments. And then this single line right here does all the work. We're using the scan method from nmap on our object and it will basically run a nmap scan to get all the data. Further in the script, we can then access this instance as if it was a dictionary. Here we then create an empty list to hold all our results. Where after we use a for loop to iterate through the results, allowing us to append everything to the list we've just created once we're done. Next up, we create the output to a CSV function. We can see as arguments, we give it the file we want to save to, as well as what we want saved to that file. In this case, the host info list we just created. Here we then define the field names and see if the file exists. And below that, we open it in append mode, add the header if needed, and write the host info to the file. And finally, we'll get to our main function down here. I know it looks kind of chunky, but everything is incredibly straightforward. Again, all these initial lines just handle our command line input and then parse it correctly so that the info can be used by our script. We then handle some terminal communication so the user know what's going on. Then we'll call our all important scan hosts function, the result of which will save to our hosts infos variable. Right below this, we'll immediately call the output to CSV function to save that very same variable to file. And finally, we'll print the exact same info to terminal in a more reader friendly manner. All right, that's it for the script. So now let's get to the fun bit and test it. Sorry for that. I just need your attention for a second please ensure that you have permission to scan any network you intend to. I'm saying this because you could actually get in legit trouble if you don't. So either set up a VLAN or in my case, since I am a happy member of Hack the Box, I'm going to spin up one of their CTF machines, which we'll use to communicate with. And that's all I'll say in the matter. Good. Okay, and we'll run this scanner exactly as we did the previous one, meaning that once again, we'll run it with sudo e and provide it with a specific IP and associated open ports that we'd like to scan. 
And here we have our results. We can once again see our service and service numbers. This time it's formatted a bit better. And we can see that though it tried to detect the operating system, it was unable to do so for any of the ports, which is not that unusual. And finally, let's check to see if we have our CSV file. We can see scan results there. Let's have a look at the contents. And we can see that it saved all the results in a convenient CSV format. Okay, awesome. So in just four short lessons, we've built two scripts. The first receives as input a subnet and a net mask and produces a list of open IPs and ports. The second script can then take that very list of open IPs and ports and produce information regarding the OS and services, as well as output the results to a CSV file. Okay, so that's great. These two scripts clearly work together. One's output is the other's input, but it's kind of a bummer that we have to run one, take that info, and then feed it into the other before running that. This is a bummer, man. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just, you know, wrap them together so they effectively run as a single script? Well, fret not, dear friends, for I am here to tell you that we will realize this monumentous achievement in our very next lesson. It's obviously gonna be awesome. Until then, peace out.